Welcome to Musitations, Sound Healing and Sound Wisdom for a World in Need. On Musitations, we explore all things musical, meditative, and creative for healing, transformation, and awakening the relationship between nature, culture, and the soul. I'm Michael Branty Maria, and I'm your host and guide on this journey on the edge of a new millennium. I bring my 30 plus years of experience as an integrative wellness guide, best selling author, meditation, yoga, mindfulness teacher, and a four time Grammy nominated musician. Join me now on this adventure of awakening the soul. Welcome to another episode of Musitations. It's so great to have you here. We have a really special guest. But before I introduce him, I want to put a little plug in for my new podcast. As you know, Musitations really focuses on all the muses, creativity as a path of healing, and using in particular sound for a meditative sound healing practice. But sometimes we interview poets and and artists, and the main focus is creativity as a mindful meditative practice. The new podcast I've just started is called The Other Side of Things, and it just allows us to have a larger conversation. And basically, two things that have had a major impact or loss of in this culture is nuance and subtlety and looking at the many sides of things. So three of my passions, love, death, and madness, which probably blows some people away, but 33 years as a Jungian oriented psychologist, made me realize that oftentimes when we're healing or working through things, these are three passions I have, and we're going to have a lot of interesting guests to talk about these really interesting, challenging, difficult topics that all go into healing. And also we're going to be exploring some alternative healing practices like sound healing, but in particular some places that expand beyond musitations. So I hope you'll join me there. Without further ado, I want to bring on our featured guest today, Travis Schumacher. And I just love the intro to his YouTube channel, which is really done extraordinary well. Many of you probably have even come across this channel. If you if you Google sound healing, Travis and his good childhood friend Drew are going to pop up with some of the most aesthetically creative and sonically healing videos out there on on youtube today and just my hat is off to these guys and and the quality of of what they do but i just want to read you a little bit as an intro Uh, i also you you might hear travis's wonderful feline companion perseus purring in the background which i love which to me that's one of the most powerful sound healing sounds is the purring of a cat we're both cat lovers Um, And so this is what's on the YouTube channel. Hi, my name is Travis. I live in the rainforest of the great Pacific Northwest with my precious little orange cat, Perseus. Welcome, Perseus. It's here in the wilderness that I create a type of healing music called Sound Bath with my childhood best friend, Drew. My intent with these videos is to use them as a beacon of hope and health for those who are struggling, be it physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. Even a few moments of calm can have the most profound emotional, spiritual, and even physical healing effects. A person who has healed from their past trauma is more likely to feel happy, more likely to be prosperous, more likely to spread those qualities to those in their communities. I hope you'll enjoy me and my efforts to make a difference and spread that healing through a calming sound bath music and soothing visuals. Thanks for watching. Be well. So just share, you know, for me that just, Travis is is such a what I what I call a heart warrior. Uh, he, he's a gentle soul, and from the first time we connected, uh, I just felt uh, a brotherhood and kinship. So, without further ado, Travis, thank you for being here on Musitations. I'm really grateful. Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful introduction. Um, I'm honored to be here. You know, I'm honored to for this connection. Perseus is too. You know, he I told him that we're going in with a talk with you today. And he's like, he showed up right on time. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored for you. And thank you for holding this amazing space 
Thank you for doing the work that you do and, you know, being an absolute heart warrior. Heart warriors recognize. <laughs> yes, we recognize each other, you know, being a warrior of peace. And, and just because, I mean, I love these things, synchronicities that pop up, but I was just uh, telling Travis about my kitty Olive and how my first spiritual teacher was Thomasino. Gets me emotional just thinking about it. From the time I was five till I was 25. And the first teacher taught me to meditate, right? And we would sit and do these, you know, eye gazing, soul gazing. Mm -hmm. And it's like really, really opened me up in so many ways. But I was just showing Travis, like I carry Shanti, the white tiger of peace with me. And he goes, oh my gosh, that's been my medicine animal since I was a kid. And a reason I love that is Shanti, which is Sanskrit for peace, the idea of we need to be fierce in bringing peace into this world that's so full of conflict. You know, it's not easy being a deeply empathic, highly sensitive being in this world, particularly as males, you know. So, you know, I, I noticed that sen sensitivity right off, Travis, when, you know, I watched your videos when we first connected. Um, but I, I really want to jump in, and I was wondering if you could just share with our listeners a, a bit about your personal journey into the world of sound healing and how you discovered its transformative power. Yes, absolutely. Um, the story can be very long. <laughs> There's like so many pieces to it. Um, but to summarize, um, I, I was in a really, really dark place um, in my early 20s. And uh, as I came out of that, it was around 2011, um, I started seeking the meaning to life and uh, just really exploring the depths of myself. And, you know, like, is there an afterlife? Is there, you know, a creator? Is there, do I have a spirit? Like, I believed in these things, but I wanted to know for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess it all really started with... Um, my roommate at the time, he was an atheist and he was at uh, the grocery store one day and he came home and he was like, he's like, I just had the strangest experience. He's like, I was walking in, you know, it's called Fred Myers is the store. And this, he said, this old, this old Asian woman, you know, in, in like rags for clothes, like she stood out completely out of anyone else in this whole entire store. Um, and she like spotted him from across the whole store and just made a beeline straight for him and was like, you need to have this. You need to have this. And she didn't give this to anybody else. She just gave it to him. And he was like, like, I'm not into this stuff at all. And he's like, but for some weird reason, I feel like it's for you. Wow. And it was the mantra, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. And I mean, there's different ways to say, it. I always said, Nam Myoho Renge Kayo, and that's what worked for me. And I went on, I just started exploring these words and practicing these words. And it reached a point where I ended up in my meditations, I ended up having an out-of-body experience with it. Mm. And it broke open everything. Wow. Um, it, it changed everything about who I was and transformed my whole entire life. I saw that I was eternal. I saw that, uh, frequencies and vibrations are everything mm -hmm. and these vibrations are what hold us in these different dimensions and these different realms of existence mm -hmm. because what shifted me out was this sound that was so loud that it shattered my reality it it the frequency became so much that i exploded into this light and was in this place of forever eternity mm -hmm. that's a whole nother story of its own like oh, i love it mm -hmm. it it when I came back, I was like, oh my gosh, like I wanted to do more for the world. I wanted to help mm. people. And so I was a server and bartender at Red Lobster for seven and a half years. And I immediately was like, I want to, I want to become a healer. Like I want to, I got into massage therapy and I learned about um, chanting and I started really diving into meditation. And I became a massage therapist for, about five and a half years also. And I was actually gifted a crystal singing bowl for my birthday from my partner at the time. Aww. And it was the 432 Hertz crystal singing yeah. bowl. And the first time I played it, 
I played it wrong, <laughs> but you know, like I was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, sure. Sure. I was playing it on the inside, just like rattling it way too loud. <laughs> and it was the first time I heard and felt sound inside and outside of me. Wow. It was, I was sitting still, but it felt like I was going, whoa, whoa. just like mm. I was, I guess that's the best way I can describe it. It was the sound was all through me and I'm like, like, what is this thing? And I, uh, about a year later, um, I ended up going to Thailand on a spiritual retreat and I stayed in 11 days silent Vipassana mm -hmm. and every transition of the activities that happened throughout the day, uh, you know, like from Dharma talks to silent walking meditation to meditation, they would ring this big giant ancient bell and this bell every time i'd hear it it'd give me goosebumps and um actually right before i got into that uh retreat uh, i stayed at the monastery for a couple of days prior and sorry if this is going so long no I no i love it i love it. Okay. it's all wonderful great and um so <laughs> it's funny how the real spark of sound happened I was, uh, it was my first day in Thailand, first time ever traveling by myself in a whole new culture, a whole new world. And it was, you know, I was pretty scared. Sure. And um, I was, I, I arrived at the monastery and I was like, okay, I'm safe here. And so I just started walking and exploring this monastery. It's hundreds and hundreds of acres big. And I was walking all by myself and I came to this, uh, like, it looked like almost like a, a an old rundown temple. And right in the middle of the field were all of these bottles and garbage, like a big pile of garbage. And I was like, like, oh, there's garbage. I was like, I'll clean it up for him. Mm -hmm. And so I started picking up this garbage. And then all of a sudden from around the corner of this monastery um, or this temple, this <laughs> like rabid dog came oh, out man. and he like oh, looks at me. And I was like, I was like, oh, hi, puppy. And he like comes out and starts barking at me hysterically. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, these are these must be his chew toys. Like, because uh -huh. all the bottles were chewed up. And so I was like, okay. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I put it down. And he like turns and starts barking, barking, barking. And this whole pack of rabid, feral oh dogs. Like, they didn't even have hair. Like, they were like, <laughs> like it, it terrified me and they they full-blown chased me down like they i ran for my life oh like my snipping at the back of my ankles and um i i reached the monastery where there's monks and they all came running out and they're like throwing rocks and like yelling <laughs> at the dogs to go away and i was just like uh what just happened <laughs> like i just entered this sacred monastery and i was just almost eaten alive by a pack of dogs <laughs> And it led me to uh, this German monk because on my walk, I ended up coming across his little like uh, pagoda, not a pagoda, but it was like a little hut. Right. And um, he was playing this Tibetan bowl and um, he started, I started talking with him. He started talking with me and started sharing the properties of sound. And I told him my story and he gave me a profound lesson, which was, you know, don't run from the dogs because pray mm -hmm runs from the predator wow, and so right. if you hold your ground right they're not going to do anything right. which came in handy later on because uh. <laughs> i experienced it for a second time and i was like not this time dog um but yeah he he actually had me lay down and he placed one of these tibetan bowls on my chest and he rang the bowl and i was like like it almost put me into into tears like it gives me just once thinking about it. like the feeling of the vibrations going through my it was the first time i felt sound resonating through my bones and my cells and that was the spark of all of it and then i ended up having this profound uh experience with a tuning fork in a um uh, ecstatic dance class that i went to in on kopanyang and it was like on the top of this hill in a pyramid building and this guy just placed it right on my pineal gland and he was like like activation <laughs> like whoa like what is this tuning fork and so i gathered all this knowledge and when i came back i was like i want to do this i want to learn more about sound and vibration and my motto as a massage therapist was 
healing the world one body at a time. And it comes at, you know, at the cost of your body, you know? And so I wanted, I realized I could impact a larger amount of people if I could, you know, figure out the sound thing. Right. And so I started buying tuning forks and I bought some more Tibetan bowls and I bought some crystal singing bowls and I started using them in my private practice with my one-on-one -on -one clients. Nice. And um, then I created a program for the Four Seasons and was like, I, I created this brand new sound bath experience for that hotel. And it wasn't really catching on um, with the manager. He was just like not really interested. It, right. No. And then one holiday, uh, I bumped into Drew at my parents because Drew and I were we were born pretty much neighbors our whole entire lives. Nice. So right from the day we were born, we were friends. And we were both visiting our parents. And since they lived next door to each other, we started talking. And Drew explained that, uh, you know, he had – I knew that he had gone to USC. But we had, like – there was a period of time where we weren't in touch, maybe five or six years, and um, if not longer. And um, he, yeah, told me that he want, he's interested in starting a YouTube channel. He's really interested in ASMR. And that was what he was planning on doing. And then I told him that I'm doing the sound bath stuff at the Four Seasons. He's like, sound bath? Like, what's sound bath? And I, <laughs> I I explained it to him. He's like, he's like, man, that's like, that's like, that sounds so relaxing and right in line with something that I was imagining. And sure. so he started doing his research on it. And there was only really two crystal singing ball sound bath wow. uh, videos on YouTube. And both of them were at like a million views. Wow. And, but the quality was... You know, it yeah, was. Yeah. So, what year? What year was this? How long was it? Been? That was um, twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. So yeah, six years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, we. He was like, "Do you want to?" He's like, "Do you want to start a YouTube channel?" And I'm like, "Because uh, I've never been into social media, sure, and I'm like, sure. I don't know if I want that attention." And I'm like, uh, you know it's a way to get more people. Like it's yes. a way to reach the world. Yes. Yes. And so I'm like, yes, let's, let's try it. I was like, sure. So he came over, I gave him his first sound bath and he was like, <laughs> like fell in love with it. And then the rest is history. Is we, history. we, yeah, we stuck to it. One sound bath a week was our, was our dedication for the past five years. And we never missed one Sunday all that time until fairly recently. And we've kind of changed things up since then. But yeah, and that was that was the, oh, the start of my path. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Would yeah, you do you. those weekly Sundays uh, live or would you record it then post it? Or? We would record it and then post it. Like yep. So it. Drew would come over. And um, it's, it's so funny thinking back on how we first start things because yeah. I was in a uh, like 350 square foot studio apartment wow. and there it was so noisy all around like the upstairs neighbors wanted to do the dishes every time we were of course, of course the neighbor next door had a dog that was always barking and the other guy was talking on his phone up against the wall like wow. probably that's where his bed was and so sure. like we i'd be in the flow and then we had to stop every <laughs> five six minutes and then wait for whatever's happening and then dive back into it and then stop <laughs> back and forth. Let's go. And to top it off, we had to have the heat off because the heat gets loud. And so it would get so hot in there. And I would just be like <laughs> dumping sweat <laughs> just because there's these lights on me. And it was, yeah, <laughs> like he it, persevered. Right. Isn't it beautiful though, looking at that, you know, trajectory and where you've come from. I, you know, I always like to say, you know, mm -hmm. um, my wife and I have done well for ourselves, but we started off with nothing in grad school in a studio apartment about that size <laughs> with just crazy neighbors and loud and we were, you know, needing to take, take our double coupons to the uh, giant eagle in Pittsburgh to, you know, we had $25 a week for groceries and that was it. And so it's like those times, you know, um, you look back and say, wow, look where, look where we've come. So, I, I love it. I love it. And just yeah. for those, you know, who don't know, I mean, um, you have two channels, but the main one's Healing Vibrations. I'm looking at 605,000 subscribers. Yeah. And I don't even know how many views now. I mean, 
like yeah. how many millions of views you probably think uh, 65 million views I think. wow um dude my hat's off to you it's it's really Thank beautiful you. and you've done it with tremendous quality <clears throat> tremendous heart tremendous artistry and you know my friend actually calliope films who i collaborate on uh, these little short films that when i went off to film school in you know 2019 living that that lifelong dream um which was such a blast but my cinematographer chris and i we just like just like drool over your your scenic <laughs> it's like he even said because and and he's you know he's a red camera guy and he's He's, you know, shoots for, you know, Discovery Channel and A&E. And he was like, I don't know who's doing that video, but he's, you know, this is really amazing. You know, this is like to get Chris to be like, you know, you know kind of eye dropping. And he goes, I'm going to have to start watching this. This is like, you know, it's good, but it's also visually just, you know, gorgeous. And, and it is. You. And I think that uh, adds so much to it. Um, so... Yeah, tell me about, you know, as far as that whole, um, you're, you know, you have this amazing following, you have your own unique approach, um, and you've kind of shared how you've evolved online. I know that as far as, you know, uh, I'm curious with that kind of following, you seem to have a pretty engaged listener. Oh, and you also have, it's sleep vibrations? Is yeah, the sleep, second sleeping vibrations, sleeping vibration, vibration, yeah. sleeping vibrations. Um, for you know, I'm, I'm sure you get amazing amounts of feedback, suggestions. Have there been any surprising insights or stories shared by your community, or things that that maybe have surprised you, or that that led you in a new direction, or you know, anything you want to share in that? I, I do know you mentioned kind of like, you know, moving from healing vibrations to sleep vibrations. I don't know if that was more listener motivated or how that unfolded, but anything else you'd want to kind of, however that hits, whatever that inspires you yeah. know, to, to share. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for all of that. Thank you. You know, I'm honored. And whenever, I think that's, that's one of the things that um, impacts me the most is when an actual musician, you know, someone who's, you know, a professional in music compliments my music. Cause you know, I had, I had that imposter syndrome for quite a while. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm playing the notes that sound good together, but I don't know what it means. Like, I don't know why they sound good together. And, um, so I, because I had those, you know, little insecurities, I, have changed i i am becoming a real musician you know like i'm understanding music theory i'm learning the piano and all these things it's like all part of the process um but yeah going back on what you asked um it's hard to say a specific story um because every day we get comments that you know it, it puts me on the verge of tears every single day i'll put on my music and i'll just read the comments mm. and just be like <laughs> oh my god like and i'll just like when i have the time i'll comment back but sometimes i just give people a heart mm. um and i feel like giving that acknowledgement when someone's opening their heart and being vulnerable no matter what it is it it builds that connection you know yes. because i'm a real person and i care and i'm not just like some robot and detached from you know everything that's happening on the space it's like we we've coined the term vibe tribe, you know, because we've wanted to okay. we've wanted to it, it took us a long time to find the right the right word. Right. Um for the for the team or for the community. And it was that and also light seekers. So mm. it's it's tough because that's what everybody seems, you know, we're all seeking the light. Yeah. And you can only find it through yourself. And yeah. we can hold space for people and I never, you know, I call myself a healer in the sense that I'm always healing. Like I'm a healer because I'm healing all the time. Yourself, right. Yeah. Exactly. But I'm not, I don't consider myself healing anybody. I just, mm. I'm holding space with these 
vibrations. And then as you go in, you have your own experience. And that is where the healing takes place. Like you might hear this one note that's going to spark this thought from what happened when you were five years old that you had completely forgot about. And that then you feel it in a pain in your back. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's where my pain's been coming from. And wow. you're like, I, f I forgive this part. Yeah. I forgive, you know, who did this to me mm -hmm. or what I did to them. And then phew, the back pain's gone or the arm pain's gone or the, the ache in the knee is gone. I'm not saying that all pains come from that, sure, but that's, sure. that's often, a, you know, a lot, a great deal. There's yeah. a huge psychological or, or trauma based. No, thank you for all that. That's so beautiful. Um, and yeah, I like to say we create a space for healing to happen. Yes, right. Absolutely it happens. And you're also sharing, you know, you know, I think I've shared with you on my yoga, meditation teacher as well and yoga nidra is my real love my my main practice for myself and others and when i'm guiding and in yoga nidra and you're probably familiar with this yoga samskaras which are these deep-seated habit patterns of the mind and heart and that's kind of what you're describing when we go into these really deep places where we can just be incredibly relaxed and let go this stuff comes to the surface like you know i'd often in some of my sound healings I, I, I've done in person, people will come, I'll notice, you know, people's just tears are rolling down and they'll come up. I think, I, I think I'm doing something wrong. I just cried through the whole thing. I say, you know, that's, that's what you're holding back when you're staying busy all day. And it's simply, it's just coming to the surface and being released, you know, and how do you feel? I feel better. I just, I didn't expect to come here and I thought I was going to be in bliss, but it just, it's just processing it out and allowing that yes. to, I think that's where, you know, vibration is. I mean, we are vibration. Everything is vibration. One thing I like to talk about on these citations actually is that we are music. Absolutely. We are music. We are, you're less Travis than Travising. I'm Michaeling. We're, we're these moving, <laughs> yeah. flowing patterns of vibration. So let me go of these nouns, you know, and a lot of indigenous uh, languages don't have nouns in them. They're very verb based, which means they're kind of like these energetic. My Blackfoot teacher would say, you know, Michael, I can talk Blackfoot all day and not utter a noun. And I'm like, wow. And it's kind of like he'd say it's almost like singing. You know, there's kind wow. of, you know, Michaeling, listening, Travising, curiousing. I was ever right. I never and, thought of that. Right. And much less focus on past and future, very, very present oriented. Um, but yes, I, and the other thing I wanted to to reinforce in the last the first time we chatted, it's like you are a musician. I had the same imposter syndrome. <laughs> and and I do want to 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 mention that sure it's so aesthetically, visually beautiful, but the other thing I noticed was and I've shared this with you, your touch. You have a, a touch that you bring and I love I love one of my favorite quotes of Van Gogh is uh, you're an artist before you ever put paint to canvas. It is a way of feeling and sensing and listening and touching and being touched by the world. It's a way of being and moving through the world. So, you know, that, that was the first thing I noticed, you know, your, your, your sensitivity and just your, the other way I like to say it as a musician, there's incredibly highly technically accomplished musicians, but I always say, this was my teacher, David Darling, who really taught me this was, you know, whether it's classical, jazz, sound healing, whatever, chant, new age, ambient, you can tell, are the musicians listening? Are they in the moment? And they are listening as the sounds are rising. And, and that's very different than the technical player where it kind of could be incredibly technically beautiful, but it kind of leaves you flat because they're thinking about what they're doing that evening because they're so rehearsed. They're so practiced. And that's when, because I had the imposter syndrome too. I'm very self-taught. I think I've shared you. All my music is layered improvisations. I don't write anything mm -hmm. down. I, I set up my little altar space here and I burn my sage and cedar. I get into this space and it does feel like a form of channeling. And I'm listening as much as I'm playing to whatever this we call, whether you call it the Tao or spirit or all I know is it's like, surfing these waves and I it's the most joyous thing I know and it and it feels so intimate I, I think you know I, I share this thought on these they feel more like 
tone poems or sound prayers. It, it feels, it's very devotional. It's very, and I notice that when you play. And, and that's one of the reasons that I think you've also found your vibe tribe is that you, you just bring a lot of heart to what you're doing. And, you know, so I really want to honor that. Yeah. Yes, you are a musician. Um, whether you, I, when people say, do you read music or no music theory? I say just enough not to get in the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you know you never want to get to a point where you you get like learn it but then put it aside when you sit back down yeah um, so so anyway how about I, I was curious what you would share with your listeners like people who want to experience your sound healing online how best you know for them to listen and, and i'm sure there's as many different ways as people but i didn't know if you you have suggestions for people that to receive the most benefit out of what you share online. Yes. So of course, you know, there's many different ways that people experience the sound. Um, what we notice is a lot of our listeners actually just use the speaker from their phone. And that's, you know, only a fraction of the experience. And, some some does that frustrate that people... you ever? That's like no, you put headsets on, and boy, you're really gonna you're just gonna take takes you away. It doesn't necessarily frustrate me, but I'm like, just throw on some headphones, right? If right. you find because I earbuds. feel like, yeah, I feel like it doesn't really give my music the right. justice. Totally. So I'm like, if you're enjoying it like this, like just try it with the headphones, and it will totally change your experience. It it just encompasses you and so i think the best way to listen to like healing vibrations specifically is make yourself comfortable throw on some headphones find the right volume not too quiet not too loud and breathe through the sounds mm. listen to what you're hearing and explore where your mind takes you explore what surfaces explore you know where did you feel like Oh, you're listening and all of a sudden you felt something in this area. Look into it. You know, be like, okay, I feel you. What are you trying to tell me? And communicate with your body as you explore and breathe. And I think that doing that type of listening will bring you the deepest transform transformations of yourself and healing that you might not even know you need. Because those those sounds just spark it. And I, um, I just created, I call it my magnum opus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's the first sound bath that I've made an ambient track of like Beautiful. layers. It hasn't come out yet, but I've listened to it probably 50 times already. Mm -hmm. And it makes me cry. Oh. And I, I can't have, like, I'm not sure. I mean, I, it's like, this sound of forgiveness, letting go and acceptance. Wow. And so when you have the headphones on, it allows those sounds to, to penetrate through your whole entire being. Yeah. You can also listen to the sounds on like a loud, a, a loud speaker, which is also really beautiful. Right. Um, I do that with my baths. I just put on a speaker and then just listen to it. But the ultimate experience comes when you throw on a good set of headphones and just go inside yourself. Beautiful. Oh, I love that. So do you have a title for this ambient track? So I think it's going to be for letting go and mm. forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness and letting go. Because that's just it just naturally feels like that's what it should be. Awesome. So, so when when can the listeners look forward to this being released? I I wish it could be now, but <laughs> we have <laughs> such an archive right. of music built. And so it might be March, okay. may, maybe February. And so we're like, like, we could just move this release down here and then bring this one up here. Beautiful. And so, yeah, it, it's coming. <laughs> so do you release on spot, like on the, the digital streaming services as well as YouTube when you do that? Yeah. So they're everywhere. Like every pretty much every streaming service um insight timer aura health um yeah spotify itunes uh 
you name it, title, we're on Great. there. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so how much do you do beforehand? Like when you said you have kind of the archive, do you guys do more than one session at a time now and then you have it to release over? Like, will you set aside a day to do that or do you kind of? Yeah. So every Wednesday, uh, Drew and I, well, we actually just hired our first employee, which is congratulations, huge milestone, huge. And he, you know, out of like 160 applicants, wow. we really narrowed it down. And he's just, he's just so perfect for Wonderful. healing vibrations. And um, so now the three of us, and this is something that Drew and I've always done is we get together every Wednesday and we, it's our planning day. And so it'll be an hour and a half to three hours of <clears throat> planning, putting things together. We'll come up with these ideas and then we break down like what instruments am I going to use? What sequence am I going to play them in? Am I going to add an ambient track? What's the theme of it? Um, what is it going to look like? What what lighting do we want to use to enhance the effect of the intention that we're putting in like what props do we want to bring in to also enhance the feeling when you come into the space and so it's like it's a really in-depth process and we film and record every thursday for sound baths wow. and so it's an all-day thing and we film for healing vibrations sleeping vibrations and then we did start a new channel called chakra vibrations chakra vibrations wonderful yep. And um, that one's finally catching some pretty nice traction too. Great, great. And so, yeah, each one has very specific types of music. And then we, uh, on Thursday, Thursday comes around. So tomorrow, um, Drew comes over to my place and my studios is in my upstairs. And we create these magical sound baths. Wow, I love yeah. it. Wow, I love Thank you for sharing the workflow because it is, I think, just for anybody wondering how how that unfolds, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. and, and again, hats off to you guys. It's, it's very exciting. I can't wait till the new one comes out. Well, I, I will, you have to let me know for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Because I know we, we've talked about maybe we'll do a piece together one day, which would really, I would so enjoy that. That would, that be, would be so up for that. Yeah. That would be so great. Yeah. I just, um, I can, I hear my flutes floating in and around and they leave a ball. <laughs> yeah. and it would just be such a treat. That'd be so great. Yeah. And what it could be is, uh, you know, maybe I create the sound math and I just send it over to you and you just freestyle oh, wow. over. It. Yeah. No, hey, we can. I, so I don't have to actually come to Seattle, huh? Yeah. And, uh, however you'd want to do it. Yeah. It, that would work too. That would work right. too. No, um, that's that. Yeah. No, if you, if you get to a point, just uh, listeners, you're the first to hear this possible collaboration. <laughs> Uh, but I just, if you, if you come across something I need to do is, um, you know, at another time we'll talk about like which flutes I think would really do well and what key they're in and what their main notes might be. That would be a blast. Like just that I hadn't thought about it doing it that way, but that would yeah. really work. I love That'd it. That'd be great. Cool. I'm excited. <laughs> um, too. So like any field sound healing comes with its own challenges, Travis, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I'm curious about obstacles or misconceptions you encountered from people or, you know, yeah, obstacles or difficulties were some of the challenges that you had to overcome or maybe misconceptions and how you guys have addressed them. Yeah. So I think one of the big things that comes up, especially in, you know, like um, the spiritual community is um the effects of the frequencies right. so like don't listen to 440 hertz because it you know it imbalances your body or only do 432 or that 528 hertz heals your dna um there's no science behind these claims they're just they're just people saying these things and because i believe them at a point until i'm like really like okay, if we're going to make this sound bath for this theme, we want the real true facts. We don't want to say, go with, you know, it could be, you know, um, but we do, when we do, we say it is said to, you know, right. so there, there's no, right. like, this is going to heal your right. DNA because I've listened to, you know, my 528 Hertz many times and, you know, I don't know if it healed my DNA and, <laughs> and with the 440 Hertz, like I have heard, I've listened to 440 for 440 Hertz 
thousands of times and had sure. beautiful experiences Amazing with it. Experience. Same, same. And same with 432. They're, they're just different. Yes, and, different. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we really wanted to break that barrier down and like not make any false claims. And, you know, 528 hertz may help the DNA, you know, but there is no science to back that up. We don't and, know for sure. And who knows? What if, you know, 385 hertz also heals the dna it exactly. you heal yourself with any frequency that you hear so any frequency that you hear could heal your dna based on what you're releasing and allowing to happen within yourself i love that you know i i, I want to almost have you or, or i'll even let me see if i hear you a bit I, I love this you heal yourself you can heal yourself through any vibrational field it has so much more to do with our intention and where and how we're able to connect, link, open mind and heart and soul to that. And, and I really love that. I think that's a really great, great corrective. I kind of call it an existential corrective to a lot of the new age kind of things where people can, you know, uh, well, here, I, I love to wear black, you know, and, and I'll go to yoga festivals or, you know, that everybody is in white and it's like, you know, going, why are you in black for you? You know, part of ISIS, you know what that's doing to you and you can't do this. You can't do that. And, and I, I think it becomes kind of this, um, uh, fear it's fear based, I guess. And also sometimes elitist based. And, and I, you know, even though I don't focus on that, but having a PhD, having done research in psychology, you know, I do, um, I'm not, I, to, to see the science is really great. And we're knowing there's so much going on and there's so much we don't know. So I, I really love that for the listeners, for us to be really open-minded and, and not let somebody hijack your experience by telling you that's not possible or mm -hmm. by the same token, there's no proving it. It's not the case that it may heal your DNA, but, but not focusing on these very narrow ways, which oftentimes there could be a hidden purpose of, you know, my sound bath is better or my singing bowls are better. And, and that doesn't support the community, I think, in the largest sense. So I, I really love that. I think that's a really beautiful way of expressing it, Travis. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's there's lots of those barriers. And um, I did experience a lot of that with Instagram. Um, the sound bath community, the sound healers on right. Instagram are so close to us and really? to healing vibrations and to me. And it's just like, they're like, mine's, mine's, I'm the master healer. <laughs> I'm the healer. <laughs> me. And I'm just like, us, you know, us. like. Oh my gosh. Yes. Don't be like that. Like no. you obviously have a lot of work to do. Okay. Yes. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's the, how the ego can co-opt that and it's uh yeah the i would call it the guru problem and and that exclusivity and it's it's a real danger and there's a lot of a lot of that out there and it's it's a false teaching that you know, that can hurt people so um and <laughs> there could also be some sour grapes about you know what a, a wonderful you know following you have <laughs> on, you know, on YouTube and that you've re reached so many people, but that's always been my approach is being inclusive, staying humble, um, being supportive of others that are, uh, yeah, it's, it's creating community, moving from the I to the we, you know, we are all in this together. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I like to say we're also responsible for the vibrations we send each other. Absolutely. And we need a world where we're being supported. And, and I think of, you know, you know, the soul as an ecosystem and the mo more diverse an ecosystem, the more sustainable it is. So for us to be supportive of each other and to create a diverse community, the better for all of us, you know, absolutely. And, gosh, us against them, me against you. I mean, that that's the old story. The new story, the ancient future story is interconnection absolutely interdependence so some i resonate with that yeah. entirely it's like you know there's no gatekeeping over here you know like my knowledge is your knowledge like i'm not i don't consider anybody like competition it's like Beautiful. you are also doing the work 
for your area. You know, right. you are the more people that could be doing sound healing, the more people that are going to heal on this planet, which is the ultimate goal is finding healing within ourselves and doing that by leading by example and authenticity and being mm. genuine and real and living through the heart and just being open and loving. It just seems so simple to me. I know. Ditto. And it's, yeah, there's so much suffering in the world. And that to me is, you know, I, I, I often will imagine, you know, I think a real challenge is holding the suffering of the world in our heart and also this expansive, incredible, I call it the great loving, also holding the great loving in our heart, um, mm -hmm. can, which can heal the pain and suffering of the planet. So not to ignore it, but also not get lost in the suffering, but also not get lost where you get, uh, again, the ego co-ops, like you might have a spiritual experience with the ego co-ops. And that ultimately is motivated by fear. A person would probably, you know, deny it, but fear of, you know, losing their their community or losing somehow needing to be better than and and it's actually a sad place so i try to just send that person love and move on yes <laughs> absolutely i think that's beautiful yeah and yeah. with everything that's going on in the world you know there's like with the cancel culture and yes. with with people like you, this side and this side i've in the past few years i've learned to stop taking sides with anything any wow. information that i hear yeah, you know no matter how horrendous the act is from someone every single side there's two there's always two sides to yeah. every single situation every single conflict every single thing that's happening so the only thing that we can do to relieve that is by holding space for both sides that's it. it's like I love you both. Like you're yeah. both hurting. So you're doing this. You're hurting. So you're doing this. Not like you're bad or you're bad. It's just like, there's just pain and trauma in it. so many different, you know, outlets in this world. And to just not be like, you're the bad one. You're, and you know, I don't pick sides. Yeah. And so I'm just a space holder and I'll yeah. just be there for anybody. You know, anybody can listen to my music. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your religious beliefs or your political beliefs. This is the space that you can come to get away from all that noise yeah. and find your own peace. And if you can find peace, then it's going to ripple into the into time space cuz if you're feeling good, then you're going to go out and you're going to say something nice to this person yes. and then this person's going to be like, "Oh, wow, that person was nice to me. And then they're going to feel good. And then they're going to pass it on to that person. They're going to, and, you know, pay it forward and it spreads like wildfire. Healing vibrations, you know, and that's when, yeah, it, it's actually a very deep, beautiful thing you just said. It's, you know, I call it the ocean of peace that lies within or the great loving. And it's very similar to restorative justice, which is really looking at honoring not either or, but and. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, in the deepest versions of, Buddhism, uh, there's something called Prajna Paramita, and it re it was reminding me of you know the 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 Buddha gave his this talk. It was kind of his Sermon on the Mount in Buddhism on Vulture Peak Mountain, and it was the teaching of form is emptiness and emptiness is form. And the idea was that you must actually even transcend everything I've taught you to not not allow your spiritual work to make you arrogant and somehow, hey, look how good I am because I'm a, a practitioner. So you have to let mm -hmm. all that go. You have to let go of even, you know, he said that's where where the old term came from. You know, if you meet the Buddha on the path, kill him. It's because don't be attached to anything being better than anything else. And that was my, it's my favorite mantra, which has been so powerful for me. He also gave this mantra on that talk, which was, Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasum Gate Bodhisvaha, which you could translate as Om Beyond, Beyond, Beyond the Beyond, Beyond Groundlessness and Perspectives, Fully Awake, So It Is. So the idea is getting to this place. Not only are there always two sides, and that's actually, it's perfect. We might have to have you on the, the other side of things because. Not only are there two sides, but there's actually, in some ways, an infinite number of perspectives on any experience. Yes. What, what I you know like to call multi-perspectivity. Yeah. And that's where we get nuance and subtlety. And 
and it, it hurts the soul to get locked in this aggression of, of either or. I mean, this world is suffering from that. Yeah. And so I really, I really, I, I didn't expect to get into this piece, but I love your courage and just saying, I don't take sides. How beautiful. Yeah, because people have always will call me apolitical, you know, because it's like, how can you not? And it's like, you know, that's, that's just, we're not going to evolve unless we look at that diversity of perspectives and, and hold space. Um, I'm really interested in restorative justice and how that's unfolding. It's a really beautiful practice of doing exactly what you're talking about, mm. holding space for two extremes so we can find something more amazing in the, in the middle. That's another, there's something called the Mandorla practice, which is looking at like a Venn diagram, two overlapping circles. And then there's the Vesica Pisces in the middle, which is what is the way between these two extremes? And mm -hmm. I would do that a lot when I was doing marriage counseling and, you know, or conflict resolution. So you're, you're doing that. And I, I, I just love it. Um, you have so much wisdom. Oh, <laughs> I love yeah. hearing and like these yeah. terms that you've yeah. coined. I'm like, oh, oh that's such a good term. Oh, they're such good terms. They're so sweet. Yeah, it's like I I play with words the way I play with music. You know, I just um, I don't know where. True artist. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I do like to think of being a, a wordsmith, um, but uh, thank you, Travis. It means a lot. Um, so, just as we're beginning to wrap up, this has been such a rich, wonderful, you know, time together. Both in terms of what you see as future trends with sound healing and what's what's on the horizon for you guys. Yes. So I believe that, you know, sound healing has always been here, but it is trending up. And the more that people are learning about it, the more that people are finding themselves and finding healing through it, the more it's going to grow. And I believe that we... Uh, you know, healing vibrations has, I feel like really connected the world with it. Like it's been, I mean, a lot of different cultures and countries have their own forms, but I feel that we are at the beginning of, you know, a profound healing that the world needs. And um, one of the things that I'm doing right now with Drew is I'm putting together my own sound bath course to teach people how to play because, you know, I've been to sound baths where I was just like, oh, like, right. oh my gosh, like, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. And when you experience that, if that's the kind of, if that kind of sound bath is being taught, given to people, people are never going to, they're going to close that door and they're going to be like, I'm not into that. They're not going to come back. And so I feel I have this amazing platform that can, help people learn and teach them how to use these things in the right way and how to be present with it and how to take their time with it. And, um, so I think that, you know, the world's only just getting started with yes. the crystal singing bowl stuff. Yeah. Um, and then also for healing vibrations, we, we're wanting to create our own brand of crystal singing bowls. Beautiful. And so this is, um, Hey, <laughs> this is, there's these big plans that we have and we're in the process of putting them together now and in hopes to have, you know, a crystal singing bowl in every house oh, in the world. You know, like beautiful. if you just had one bowl while you're, you know, feeling stressed at home, like you just got into a fight with a family member, you could just go in there, gently play this bowl or play it for the whole house. <laughs> it's just like you listen to it and you play it. And if you just have one little bowl to play with just that, as it did for me can just, just, <sighs> it just does it instantly for me. If I'm feeling stressed out or overwhelmed, I could go upstairs, play a couple of my singing bowls together, specifically two, the heart and the root chakra F and C together. And I just, it's an instantaneous emotional release. It's just, everything's okay. Yeah, that's beautiful. Everything's that's, all right. That's how it is. No matter how my day is like one of these flutes, and within just a breath. In fact, that's a, an, uh, my first solo food album. I'm going to finally, I'm working on called One Breath, just one breath. And I'm in that Zen place. I'm, I, it's just, it is amazing. I mean, that is the power of sound. 
yeah. which to me it's even more than music. It's just it's just a heartfelt sound that it's also because I do think there's something another you know one of these things um, on my vision quest 30 years ago that this line of a, a poem came uh, a poem that came to me and this is a line each moment is a note in the song of today and the other part of that is this sense in which you know we are each a note in the song of peace the world needs today you know so when we are able to find our note you know and find our way of letting go and dropping out of our head into our hearts that's why i love the root and heart chakra you know drop out of our heads into our heart which is the longest journey we'll ever make this one foot foot and a half but that shift can change everything and i just uh and yeah perseus agrees i love that <laughs> like, can you hear him <laughs> yes so awesome so so cute. that's beautiful I'm, I'm i'm excited for you guys i can't wait to see what else unfolds and I'm excited to hear what, what you're coming up with, too, in the next album. Yeah, thank you. Um, have two two new projects that finally are coming out. It's been a while, you know, since I've released new music. You know, there was a lot going on with my parents' dying journeys and hurricanes here on the Gulf Coast. But um, there's there's a lot of music left in me, and there's there's almost two two albums worth of material that's what we are going to start getting released this coming year. So I'm I'm really Wonderful. excited about that and collaborations. I I let's continue to talk about that. That would definitely be awesome. Definitely. So how can people find out more about you you guys and your 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 anything you want to share with the listeners about finding your work? Yeah, um, our main source is of course healing vibrations on youtube um the other channel is sleeping vibrations on youtube and then one more is chakra vibrations on youtube healing vibrations is their sound experiences so they're there for you to it, it's like they're like meditative or you know just to like have playing in your house so each one is very unique and very specific to a, a theme um, sleeping vibrations on the other hand is really long, nothing but crystal singing bowl tracks. Gotcha. So it's just purely crystal singing bowls. Uh, whereas healing vibrations is a mixture of different instruments at times. Like it's like they're soundscapes. So like I'm going to take you on a journey with the birds to the jungle. Nice. Um, and then chakra vibrations is very specific with internal healing connected to the chakras. So like if you're wanting to work on different energy centers of your body, very sp specific ones, chakra vibrations would be for that. Um, one more thing I'd love to share is uh, we do have a, an email list that we're building so that we can let everyone know when the classes are coming out and when we're going to have our own crystal singing bowls and just like the big things that we have planned. And that's it. Um, you can sign up on there. We don't do we don't do spam. <laughs> you'll you'll get one email maybe a quarter. Um, if even that, but that's at, uh, www.healingvibrationsmedia.com. Okay. And, um, yeah, you can find all of our information through there. And, you know, I, I try to answer the comments as much as I can on YouTube. So if there's a specific experience that you had during one of my new releases, you'll guaranteed get a response the day after a new release. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones I can, I can sure. easily Maybe get to focus on. Sure. Yeah. Because it can get a little overwhelming. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then um, I guess one more thing is if you if anyone wanted my entire sound bath library as downloadable MP3 content, I do have that option on my Patreon. Nice. And so you could just, you know, listen to it offline or on airplane mode and just however you want, whenever you want. And so, yeah, sweet, sweet. It's that. Awesome. Well, thank you, Travis. What a what a treat having you here. It was so nice to really have such a deep dive into the world of healing vibrations. You know? And please give Drew my best. Um, he, you know, really, even though we haven't met, I feel like I know him through you and yeah. and, and the work and the videos. Yeah. Uh, but let's definitely stay in touch. We'll have to definitely talk about this collaboration some more. But a thousand thank yous for being here, and just wish you both just you know. A, amazing continued success helping bring healing to the world thank you so much michael yes on everything that you said and 
oh, you know, conversations like this is what this is what fuels the soul. Like, uh, like, are you sure you don't want to go for another two or three hours? Oh, <laughs> I could totally do it. I could totally do it. Absolutely. Well, I would love to have a, a, some future conversations. Of course. I mean, you're yeah. such a great guest, and no, this. You know, I, I've shared with you, and I, the, my listeners know, I call these soul versation. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. Food for the soul. Yep. Food for the soul. Yeah. And uh, and just to just you know, since you mentioned that, you know, I, your uh, vibe tribe, I'm I'm developing with my own, you know, this uh, this new book I'm coming out with, and this new film, uh, Twilight Cafe, and and people of the twilight. Um, and I can't remember if I've shared this with you before, but on my vision quest, you know, my, my, uh, my teacher said, well, when you go out on that vision quest, you know, you have to do it for your people. If you do it just for yourself, you're, you're not going to receive anything, but who are your people? You're not Blackfoot and blah, blah, blah. So I went out, he's like, fast on the land for a day or, or as long as it takes. And you got to let me know who are your people? Because that's, that's what you're really here for. You know, mm -hmm. who are your people, your, your tribe. Yeah. And it was like halfway through the day, I come back. So my people are all people. And he's like, bad answer, you know, go, go back. <laughs> so like get into the, the, the end of the day, and the sun setting and I'm like on my knees crying, crying. I prepared six months for this thing. It's like, I need to know who my people are because you're not going to take me. So I'm like, you know, who are my people? And I, I heard this voice, which happens to me. And it was your people are the people of the twilight. And I'm like, who are the people of the twilight? And the voice said, well, your species is at a time of twilight and it's not sure you'll survive. But the people of the twilight are those who live between the worlds with a foot in both worlds. And it's, they tend to be highly sensitive, intuitive and feelers and they need support and help. These are your people. And because the people of the twilight are going to be the ones to help you through this time of twilight. So I was like, okay. So I went back. It's my people, the, our people of the twilight. He said, you know, Good answer. What does that mean? And uh, and so you're a person of the twilight. So I like to call us, you know, <laughs> I feel twi it. <laughs> twilighters, twilighters, you know, having that, you know, foot in both worlds. And, you know, that's why I love, you know, you were able to share with us a bit about, to me, that was a, what I call a soul initiation. You had a, when you had that experience of this, the eternal nature, something, I always like to say this, this part of us that is, you know, infinite eternal ageless deathless and timeless and when we can con connect that which i also talk about as the great loving it's the power to heal the deepest wound and calm the greatest fear and it needs to it can't be a concept we have to have a visceral experience and that's why i think things like sound and massage and because it's it's then and i would say at that point you're not believing you know, if you've had an experience, yeah. that's a datum of, ex that's data. It's like, yep. I've been, I know that is true in my blood and bones. And, yep. and I think that's one of the reasons, you know, there's a lot of authenticity in your work is because it's coming from a place where you have had these expanded states of consciousness that you also um, are honoring in a really humble, devotional way of wanting to, to stay stay in touch with that truth with those experiences so so anyway you inspired me to share a little bit about that because um i feel like whenever i'm talking to when, when i have conversations like this it's always we're both kind of foot in both worlds and trying to trying to bring some healing to the planet in that way i love that i love that and thank you so much for sharing yeah. that with me um yeah. it's when you say your foot in both worlds because travis means crossroads Ooh. so i i always considered myself like a bridge yeah. from the spirit realm into oh, the earth I, didn't know. Realm. I never knew that but it makes sense like traverse travel yeah. Traverse. yeah or I like a that. toll booth like you have to go through to get to another place the betwixt and in between oh that's where i well that's this this short film we just finished called the twilight cafe it's it's narrative and it's entertaining but it's all about trying to find these these places and and i think any kind of healing modality that really is soulful is is takes us to these twilight places you know just like you know yep. if you're half awake half asleep it's like kind of that place just as you're falling asleep or just waking up or that i that's why i love about yoga nidra i'm always dropping into that place in yoga nidra which i like to do when i'm listening to your sound baths 
<laughs> you know, do a little yoga nidra with it. Yeah. So, well, thank you again, Travis Perseus. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for being our soundtrack today. Your purrs were just like, oh, yeah. what a precious angel. So That's sweet. Thing. Yeah. Well, I hope we'll see you again, Travis. Definitely. Thank you again for having yeah. me on this space. And thank you for doing the work that you do. Um, please let me know when your uh, all your stuff comes out. Um, and this as well. You know, I'll definitely share it with my Vibe Tribe. And... Uh, you know, we're connected for life. So hey, you, know, you want to get down on another chat or whatever you want, you know, Thanks. let me know. I, yeah. Likewise, same back at you. Thank you so much for being here on another episode of Musitations. Look forward to seeing you next time. Be well and take good care. You've been listening to Musitations, sound healing and sound wisdom for a world in need where we explore all things musical, meditative, and creative for healing, transformation, and awakening the soul. I've been your guide and host, Michael Brandt De Maria. Feel free to check out my music on Pandora, Amazon Music, Spotify, XM Cirrus Radio, or Soundscapes Cable. You can also check out my website at michaeldemaria.com or online programs at alldaypeace.com, alldaypeace.com. Listen to your heart, follow your soul, and we'll see you on the next episode of Musitations. <laughs>